Turn with me in the scriptures to the book of Isaiah chapter 60. Isaiah chapter 60. You know, the Bible says the word of God is alive. And I, that's what I love about God's word because to me, it is more relevant than what is going on in the news even today. It's like when you read these scriptures, you, you, you wouldn't think they were written years and years and years ago. You would think they were written just for us today, right? Hot, hot off the press. And that's exactly in Isaiah 60, starting there in verse 1. It says, arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen on you. And behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall rise on you and his glory shall be seen on you and the Gentiles shall come to your light and the kings to the brightness of your dawning. This depicts a dichotomy of two very different things going on in the earth today. How many of you know it's dark out there in this world? It's a jungle out there, Jane. Darkness is covering the earth. Darkness is covering so many people. But God's word to the church is around and shine this is our finest hour hallelujah the glory of the Lord is coming upon us and I like what it says there verse 3 and the Gentiles the unsaved are going to come to the light I believe we are going to see the greatest harvest of souls coming into the kingdom. The backsliders are coming. Come on, somebody. I believe it's harvest time. I realize this is Thanksgiving weekend and Christmas is fast approaching, but what has dominated the daily news and what permeates our daily lives is the threat of terrorism and the spread and influence of ISIS in our world today. That is without a doubt the elephant that's in the room. Whether it's what has gone on recently over in France, the terror attacks in Africa, or even what happened yesterday in Colorado Springs. There's a spirit of terrorism that is on the loose today. But I want to address that elephant because I believe the Word of God, God's Word, is a word of hope to us. Amen? God has not given us the spirit of fear. I said, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but power, love, and how many of you thank God for a sound mind? A sound mind. A disciplined mind. We say it all the time. The battleground is in the mind. That's where you got to win the battle, right there between your ears. So first of all, I want to talk about the battle between light and darkness. You see, the greatest way to oppose and drive back the darkness in our world is to advance the kingdom of God. That's what Isaiah 60 says. Darkness is covering the earth, grows darkness to people. But God's word to us, the believer, to the church, it's time to arise. It's not time to retreat. It's not time 
time to back up. It's not time to fear. It's not time to hide. It's time to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Am I talking to anybody here today? In John chapter 1, verses 4 and 5, John 1, verses 4 and 5, John writes, In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines into the darkness, and the darkness did not overtake it. If I turned off all the lights in this sanctuary today and it was completely dark and I lit one match or turned on one flashlight, how many of you know the light from that source would be greater than all of the darkness in the room? That's what the word says. Darkness is not greater than light. Light is greater than darkness. Now, we always say Jesus is the light of the world, but guess what? He says you and I are the light of the world, and it's time for us to shine for him. Yes. Go to Psalm 2 with me. Psalm 2. And verse 1, the psalmist writes, Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord. And listen to this, and against his anointed. I will tell you why the enemy is so rampant. Because God is getting ready to pour out his spirit on all flesh. God is getting ready to send a revival. The Lord is coming soon, and the enemy knows his time is short. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. There will be an end time harvest and our families and our friends and our co-workers are coming into the kingdom and coming to the light. Amen. Hallelujah. But the enemy wants to instill fear and intimidation in you. Why? Because fear paralyzes. It freezes you. Peer, fear is a paralyzer. Fear is false evidence appearing real. False evidence appearing real. Go to Psalm 27 with me. I love Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, my enemies, and my foes came on me to eat my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an army should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Somebody say, my heart shall not fear. Luke says, a sign of the last days is men's hearts will be failing them for fear. Heart attacks, panic attacks, torment is on the rise. But my heart shall not fear. I said, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this I am trusting. 
What am I trusting? One thing I have desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the ah, house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Thank God we can come into the sanctuary and hear the word of the Lord and get encouraged and get built up and get filled up so that when we go out into the world, how many of you know we are in the world, but thank God we're not of the world. We're of a different spirit. We serve a different Lord than the world serves. Come on, somebody. Light is greater than darkness. Darkness is prevalent in our earth today. And the enemy is using it to try to paralyze us with fear. How many know when Jesus confronted the devil in the wilderness, he said, it is written. It's written. And today as we look at these scriptures, I want you to hide God's word in your heart. The Lord spoke to me and said, some of you are getting delivered today. Today, hallelujah, that fear has got to go. That dread is about to leave. That torment is on its way out. Hallelujah. Because when the light of God's word comes, the darkness has to flee. Go to Isaiah 41 with me. Isaiah 41 the second thing I want to compare is fear versus trust. Fear is what the enemy wants us to do. But I mean, oh, God wants us to trust him. It's a time for you and I to trust in the Lord with all of our heart. Isaiah 41, 10 says, fear not. Somebody shout, fear not. Come on, shout it again. Fear not. not. Tell that person beside you, fear not. not. You say, well, how, 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 can I, how can I fear not with all that's going on? Because for I am with you. For I am with you. Be not dismayed. I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you, and I will uphold you with my right hand of my righteousness. Thank God for God. Come on. So I said, thank God for God. We don't have to fear. First John says, he that fears is not made perfect in love. See, you and I need a revelation of God's love for us. When I realize how much God loves me, I'm going to believe he's going to take care of me. He's going to watch over me. He's going to protect me. He's going to keep me. He's going to put the angel of the Lord round about me to deliver me. Come on. Now, whether it's what's going on out there in the world with all the terrorism, all the darkness, all the uncertainty, or whether you are battling things in your own life, in your own health, in your own family, or in your finances, God's word to you is do not Fear. Boy, that is so good. Do not fear. We need to put our trust in Him. Hallelujah. We need to put our trust in Him. Go back to the second Samuel 
chapter 22. 2 Samuel chapter 22. Verse 1. And David spoke to the Lord the words of this song in the day that the Lord delivered him out of the hand of all of his enemies and out of the hand of Saul. And he said, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. Come on, let's say that together. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. Come on, let's say it one more time. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. The God who is my rock, in him will I trust. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation, my high tower and my refuge, my Savior. You will save me from violence. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised and I shall be saved from my enemies. This is a great time and opportunity to put our trust in the Lord. There are travel warnings out there. They're telling people, be careful when you go to the mall. Be careful when you go to the theater. Be careful when you go to this place and that place. I'll tell you what, you listen to all that, and the enemy's going to take that and just try to torment you with it. Fear has torment. But this is not a time to fear. This is a time to trust. I said, this is a time to trust. Isaiah chapter 26 and verse 3. You will keep him in perfect peace. That original reads, shalom, shalom. Whose mind, there's the battle again, whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Trust in the Lord forever, for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. How I many you know we need to guard our mind and our thoughts? What you are watching, what you are reading, what you are listening to can affect and influence your mind. I tell you, after the early service today, I had so many different people tell me how this word was such a timely word. And I know the enemy uses fear like God uses faith. I know how prevalent fear is. And I realize that, you know, that all the terrorism and everything ISIS is doing is just stirring that spirit up. I thank God whatever we bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever we loose on earth is loosed in heaven. I bind that spirit of fear over your life and over your family. I bind spirit of fear in your mind and over your emotions and I loosen trust in the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, give God a shout of praise. I had a lady come up to me and she said she had been watching CNN and, and I thought, well, and she said, and I thought, well, no wonder it's constant negative news. And she said, 
in the middle of the night, she just woke up in total panic, total panic. And then all of a sudden, she said she just felt the hand of the Lord on her shoulder, and she heard, be still. How I many know we got to be still and know that he is God? Last time I checked, he's still on the throne. Come on. God is still on the throne. So she said, she said, I'm driving to church this morning. And I said, oh, Lord, let Pastor Gary please talk about fear today. And then she comes in and sees the word fearless. How many of you know we need to fear less and less and less until we are fearless? Come on. Amen. God doesn't want us living in fear. God doesn't want you tormented. God doesn't want you in panic attacks. God doesn't want you having nightmares. God doesn't want you losing sleep. God wants you to know he is able to take care of you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Fear versus trust. Let's go to 1 John chapter 4 and verse 4. My third point is I am versus Isis. I, how many know he's an I am God? He said, I am that I am. In 1 John 4, 4, it says, You are of God, little children, and you have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Now, I really want you to get a hold of this and process this. Think about this for just a moment. If the darkness is getting darker, and how many believe it is? If the evil is getting more evil, well, that doesn't mean that that's increasing without the God and the light in us growing stronger and increasing. Because the greater one, it doesn't say the greater one that's in heaven. It says the greater one that's in you. I decree there's a greater anointing rising on you. I decree God is growing bigger and stronger inside of you. I decree the light of God is shining brighter in you. God is unscrewing the 50-watt bulb and he's screwing it up. 150 watt bulb. How many of you know so often the more we talk about the enemy and the more we talk about our problems, the bigger and more overwhelming they seem to get. But in Psalm 34 and verse 3, it says this, Psalm 34, 3 says, Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. See, rather than talk about your problem, why don't you sing and talk about your God? How great is our God? Come on, magnify the Lord with me. Our God is great. Our God is powerful. Our God is mighty our God is strong our God is Lord of all oh hallelujah come on magnify the Lord and let God get bigger not your problem verse 4 I sought the Lord and he heard me and he delivered me from all my fears. Come on, let's say that. He delivered me from all 
all my fears. Lord, we command that spirit of fear and torment to go in the strong name of Jesus Christ. Some of you have a fear even in your own neighborhood. Some of you have a fear when you get on the bus or when you're waiting on a corner at night or when you're home alone. I'm here to tell you a thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Hallelujah. I feel the anointing in here today. Somebody get your deliverance this morning. Somebody get your freedom today. Somebody put fear on the run in your mind and life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go to Isaiah 54 with me. Isaiah 54 and verse 14. Let me leave you with this promise. Isaiah 54, 14. In righteousness, you shall be established. See, see God wants to secure you in knowing that you are in right standing with him. That's what righteousness means. You're in right standing with God. And then he says, you shall be far from oppression. Somebody say, I will be far from oppression. Now that word oppression today would probably mean stress and anxiety. God doesn't want you to worry. Acts 10, 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil. God doesn't want you oppressed or depressed or suppressed. He's the glory and the lifter of your head. You shall be far from oppression, for you shall not fear. Somebody say, I shall not fear. Come on, say it again. I shall not fear. And then he says, and from terror, for it shall not come near you. Isn't that a great promise? You need to wrap your faith around that promise today. And you need to remind yourself that the Lord is with you. Amen. That God is your shield. He's your fortress. You can run into him and be safe. Hallelujah. He is your rock. He is your deliverer. He will be to you everything you need him to be. Some of you that live alone, some of you that you need God to be your husband, God will be your husband. Come on. He'll be your defender and your protector. In righteousness... You shall be established. You shall be far from oppression, for you shall not fear, and from terror, for it shall not come near you. Let's all stand up together. Hallelujah.